In this live martial arts and self-defense class, you're gonna learn how to defend yourself with the Japanese Hanbo, also known as a walking stick. It's 36 inches. These are dowel rods. One is a little bit thicker. I just wanted to give you an example of two that you can get from a local hardware store. Get a little bit of sandpaper, oil it up. I'm gonna be using the thicker one. This is an inch and a quarter, and this is just an inch. This is gonna hit harder because it's heavier, but they're both made out of oak, and they both cost me less than 10 bucks. That one cost four. It was on sale, and this one cost, I think, six or seven. Start with your, in the middle of your hand. You're just gonna twist. I want you to warm up your wrist, get them lubricated, get them ready for this warm up or this workout. Stay safe from injury. After you do this for about 30 seconds, in your first hand, put it in the other hand. It doesn't matter which hand you start first, you're gonna do them both equally. And if you like working with the Japanese Hanbo or the self defense, Walking stick. Hello, Garen. Good to see you. Please give me a thumbs up. After you do this for 30 seconds, I want you to bring it from side to side. That just increases the range of motion in your wrists, giving you a better stretch, keeping you safe from injury, but also starting to build power in that grip. When you start to defend yourself with the Japanese Hanbo or the walking stick, you want to have a very strong grip. This is going to give you a very strong grip. After you've done that for a while, I'm gonna have you put it in one hand and put it on the floor, just like you were walking down the street. Now, leaning your weight on it, I want you to slide your hand down the back to get it into this position so that your thumb is facing the sky and you have a little bit of the wood of the walking stick facing the sky. Hello, Doug, it's good to see you again. You're gonna thrust this right into the middle line, the middle of the body of the person who's attacking you, right into the threat. From this position, slide your hand down and just simply pick it up and strike. You wanna have a nice, tight, firm grip here. That's why we do all of those warm-up exercises. Good morning, Naj, good to see you. You're sliding your hand down here and then straight up. If you want more power, take a step when you do that thrusting motion. If this is the face of the threat, the person who's trying to harm me, hurt me, I'm gonna defend myself. I'm holding my walking stick or I'm walking with it. I simply slide my hand down the back side and then come straight up and with force drive into the center of the body. Now the way this works is you have this ledge right here. That's hard wood and that's gonna go into nose, teeth, uh, throat, solar plexus, into the groin. That's gonna go into soft tissue. You're gonna allow the hard wood, this is oak, and allow that to do all the work. From here, your hand slides down the back you're gonna thrust here and then put your other hand on the back of it and I want you to push, almost like you're sliding a pull cue and hit again. So you're now hitting twice. You step in, the other hand comes on and then push. This is something you can practice over and over, thrust and strike. From here, thrust, this hand comes on, strike, bring it to your shoulder and chop bringing it down with force to the temple, to the jaw, to the neck, for the shoulder, to the arm, the elbow, all for self-defense. These are self-defense with your walking stick, also known as the Japanese Hanbo. That's all from this position where your hand comes down the back side. From here, you can also turn your hand up and over. Think about making a nice, nice hill, right? Like the shape of a hill or a wide, upside down you. From here, your hand slides down. You've identified the threat. You've told them don't come any closer. You get the other hand up, back up, you're too close. Or maybe you don't even have time to say anything. They're coming in as fast as they can. You're gonna turn your shoulder, turn your hip, turn your hand. And that's gonna come up, striking very quickly, so fast they'll have a hard time responding to it. For self-defense, you'll strike with a lot of force with the other side of it. From this position, your hand slides down the back. You can thrust, push, chop, and then spin. Now, that's not all of the motions that you can do from that position, but I wanted to give you some to practice today, and then every video will go over some more. Now, the second way you're going to get this into a position where you can defend yourself uh, Matthew says, hard plastic handle, square or T-shaped thrust from a sitting position in your wheelchair, groin strike or abdomen. Absolutely. Matthew, I was thinking of you when I got ready to do this video today. If you're sitting in a wheelchair, this is also, as you know, a great self-defense tool. 
just having a short stick from here. You can also use it kind of like an Irish fighting stick, an Irish shillelagh. I'm gonna show you the second way I want you to bring your hand down. Now the front of it, think about like a baseball bat. Think about a, um, a tool handle, right? Uh, either a, a hatch, a long ax, an ax handle, or maybe a, a, sledge ha a sledgehammer, or a short shovel handle. You're gonna bring it from here, and you have this basic striking motion. From this position, it goes down, and then you just bring it up. Now you have two hands on it, you're gonna have a lot of ability, a lot of force when you strike, especially with a hardwood like this. Now I got this one at the local hardware store. I got a couple of pieces of sandpaper, start with like an 80 grit, that means it's very coarse. It's gonna take off all of the splinters and then go uh, 120, which is gonna make it more smooth. And then after, and it only takes a few seconds, maybe a minute, right? Just slot, put, make that sandpaper round, slide it through. I've got a couple videos on here how to make these yourself with less than 10 bucks. And then go to 220 grit sandpaper and then get it really nice and smooth. This one's really smooth, it's like butter now. And then just every couple days, soak it down with some mineral oil or some uh, boiled linseed oil, something like that. And that's gonna give you the flexibility back into the wood. When these come from the, the wholesaler to the hardware store, the distributors, before they even get them, they kiln dry these, they suck all the water out of them so they don't rot. You have to get oil back into it or it'll be brittle and will break. But you can do that with just a rag and just soak it up. Make sure there's a little bit on the, the surface and that'll all soak into it. You do that five or six times over a period of a month, it's gonna become stronger and stronger and then just do it every couple of weeks. Now, from this position, sliding down the front, you can bring it and use it almost like you would use a short sword or a pair of collie sticks, or a single uh, machete. You can slice, you can chop, you can do all those same things with it. The first thing I like to do is always a thrust. The idea is if this is the threat and he's coming at me, I don't know if he's got a knife or not, we'll call this the threat since he's taller, right? There's more of them. From here, I put it up, I can simply push into his throat, push into his face, or just hold it there. He now has to get around my stick in order to stab me with a knife or grab me or punch me or choke me or do whatever he wants to do to me. So from this position, slide your hand down the front and just step into this better position. Then you can thrust, bring it to that shoulder, that chopping technique. You can bring it straight back across. You can bring it down with both hands, almost like a Japanese katana, a sword coming down on their head right through the middle. Or you can practice all those different angles of attack, right? Or, uh, vertical, and then all of these angles, and then of course coming back horizontally, and you can double up your strikes. But keep it simple. You want thrusting motions, you want chopping motions, and you want pushing motions. This is one of my favorites. From that first hand position, when I pulled it down here, I can now bring it up into the other hand, and my hands will be a split grip. One up, one down, and if this is his face, I just go straight in. That's 100 pounds of water. This is a, a water bag. It's got 100 pounds of water in it. I bring it, I turn it, and I go straight into his face. Now, the reason this works so well, uh, Doug says he likes to put rubber tips on each end. So when you practice in concrete, it doesn't destroy your stick. That's a great tip, Doug. Thanks for sharing that. If you push it straight in, you're using this oak, this hard bar of oak against the nose, teeth, throat, eyes, chest, the soft tissue here, the ribs, into the private parts, the groin. That's why this is so effective. It's effective and it works because it's hard against soft. And it doesn't matter, you don't have to be super strong to be able to smash this into somebody's face and make them get out of your face for self-defense, to back them up. Now, in this other position, when my hand slides down the front to get into a protected position and I pull it up, I'm now in a same grip or kind of a push-up grip. And it's the same thing. This and this are about the same strength. If you practice, it's really not gonna matter whether you hit them like this or this. And that's because, again, you're going into the face. All right, so uh, Matt says he's going out now with a lot more confidence in his wheelchair with his cane after watching these videos. Matt, I really appreciate that feedback. I'm glad I could be of some assistance. Reach out to me if you need any other help or any specific help. You guys can always ask me specific questions. I love to make videos for you. And when you tell me, hey, I wanna work on this or I'm struggling with this, 
Can you make me a video about this? I like to do those specific videos, so please put that in the comment section below or go to pasquinelli.com. That's my last name, pasquinelli.com. The link is in the description. And fill out that contact box and then send, send me your questions. Send me your uh, requests, send me your ideas. Some of you guys have great ideas for me on how to make better videos. All right, the last way I want you to think about carrying this, one is down, you get into this protected position, your hands are hey back up, and then you can strike, you can strike. The other is coming down the front, almost like a baseball bat or an ax. The uh, third way is if you're just carrying it like this, or in Matt's case, maybe you're in your wheelchair and you're carrying it on your lap, but you would be carrying it in your hand in a simple position, and there are two ways to turn your wrist to get it into the other hand. From here, one is just to turn it over, and now I'm in this pushing grip, and from here, I can strike. This downward strike is extremely strong if you look at where my wrist is. Coming from this shoulder, coming straight down, and then I can add that pushing thrust. See how that straightens my elbow out? I strike down into the face, and then up and through the throat. Down into the face, up and through the throat. Then I can slide my hands, and do the same thing on the other side. That's one of the best aspects of these shorter stick self-defense tools is that you can slide your hand side to side. You can even start to use it almost like you would a Japanese Joe staff where you're sliding and you're going into different hand positions as you're practicing different types of strikes. But you can always practice from here. Just slide your hands over on the sides then one hand and the other hand, and then sliding and turning, sliding and turning. And that's just something if you have extra time, you wanna get really adept, you wanna get really good at handling your shorter self-defense tool, this Hanbo or the walking stick, just practice those simple hand-changing position motions. You can even walk the hands like this one. So my hand is here. If I turn it over, I'm ready to fight. Think of a rifle butt or a strike bringing it through and going from one side to the other side or slide the hands to the middle, blast them in the face, and then punching to the sides of the head. I can hit here and now I'm smashing side to side, finish them off with a little boom, a little smashing motion. I, I missed that last comment, but thank you for whatever that was. All right, if your hand, if you're holding it here, you wanna get it into what we call the split grip where one palm is up and one palm is down, simply turn your palm up and that puts it here. Now you're in this position. We're back to that katana, that Japanese sword, or the jukdo as they call it, the Koreans, or the shinai, that Japanese uh, bamboo sword that they use in kendo. And I'm striking, striking all these basic motions. I can go down to the knee. I can come off the shoulders, going straight in. I can thrust to create distance. And again, you can slide your hands. From here, I got to here really fast. All I did was pull this hand back and this hand up. Now I'm in that rifle butt strike. I can come down in that downward striking motion. I can flip back over and I'm here. I can change hand positions and be here really quickly. You'll pick all that stuff up when you watch these videos, but also when you just practice on your own. You're gonna come up with stuff that I don't even know how to do, and that's when I want you to share it with me, right? Leave it in the comments or send me the email, go to my website. So let's review real quick. I have to get back. I've got uh, six more classes tonight. I've already taught five, or uh, three, taught three. Sliding down, I've got the thrust, I've got the swing in motion, I've got it on the other hand thrust in the chopping motion. Sliding down the front, kind of like a baseball bat. I can go into the sword motions, using it like that, or from here, I can use it as a one-handed fighting tool. I can bring my hands in the middle, and I can blast, I can box the ears, I can go to the ribs, I can go to the knees, and then holding in this position, I bring it over here and I can thrust, I can strike, I can change hands to the other side, thrust, thrust and strike. And then finally, from here, palm up and I'm fighting, I'm defending myself immediately. That's what I want, immediate direct explosive. Close with and destroy the threat with extreme prejudice, right? Um, intense action. Violence of action, as much as you can muster for self-defense, all for self-defense. Don't go slowly, don't go lightly with, with whatever you've got and lever leverage, leverage the weapons you have. This is hard oak. This will do a lot of damage. 
no matter how strong you think you are or you think you aren't. You're still, when you hold in two hands, going to be able to thrust and force somebody to respond to that thrust, either backing them up or uh, bending them over, right? Doubling them over in pain. But practice with it. The more you practice, the better you'll be at it. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. We're going to make another one of these today, I think, a little bit later. Thank you.